Hello students, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Myself Rekha Chabra, your maths teacher. Students, please like, share and subscribe my YouTube channel Learn Mathematics to understand mathematics. And I would request you all to please keep watching these videos and keep practicing questions side by side at your home. In the last video, we discussed different types of sets and we did few questions also based on those types. Now moving forward, I will discuss the concept of subsets, power set and universal set. Let's understand one by one. If all the elements of set A are in set B, so we can say that set A is the subset of B. For example, let's take set A and set B, two different sets. Since we can observe that all the elements of set A are in set B, we can say A is a subset of B. And this is the symbol which represents subset. And how we read it? A is the subset of B. Let's take one more example. We have taken three different sets. Is X a subset of Z? This set X is a subset of Z. What is the definition says? That all the elements of X should be there in set Z. So 1, 2, 3. Yes, they are present in Z. So we can say X is the subset of Z. Now, is Y a subset of Z? 3, 4 and 5. Yes, all three elements are present in Z. So, we can say Y is a subset of Z. Now, is Y a subset of X? Give it a thought. Is Y a subset of X? 3, 4 and 5. 3 is present, but what about 4 and 5? They are not in X. So, Y is not the subset of X. Now, a few properties of subset. Let's take any set A. First property says that empty set is the subset of all sets. Subset is the set which contains all elements of the other set. And empty set has no element. That's what we studied in the last video. If you missed that video, then please go to my YouTube channel and see that video first of all for better understanding of this topic. So, empty set has no element and it will be the subset of every set by definition. So, that's how we represent the empty set phi. Phi is a subset of A. So, this is one of the property that empty set is the subset of all sets. And another property is set is the subset of itself. It means every set is the subset of itself. Because by the definition of subset, we should have all the elements present in another set. So, all the elements of A are in A. So, it means A is the subset of A. So that way we can say that every set is the subset of itself. Now few subsets of real numbers. All these are subsets of real numbers. Like n represent natural number, z integers, q rational number, t irrational and r real numbers. Let's check all these sets one by one. Natural numbers can be written as n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. I hope you all know the importance of these two curly braces. If you don't put these two curly braces, it means we are not writing a set. Integers can be written as z is equal to in this format. Rational number, you all are aware what is the meaning of rational number. These are the numbers which can be written in the form of p by q. But then we have few more conditions. Let's see how can we write down q is equal to which form is this? If you remember, this is set builder form x where x is equal to p by q numbers which can be written as fractions where p and q belongs to the symbol says belongs to z means numerators and denominator are integer and q is not equal to zero means denominator is not zero so that's how we can write down the set of rational numbers irrational numbers are those numbers which are not of the form p by q Example pi, very good example and this decimal expansion you must be aware of, you have done it earlier. Non-terminating, non-repeating decimal expansion is always a, always an irrational number. So how can we write down in the set format? T is equal to x where x belongs to r means x is a real number and x does not belong to q means x is not a rational number. We know that real number consists of rational and irrational number. So if x belongs to real number but does not belong to rational number, then definitely it is an irrational number. Now real number, 
वी कैन रिप्रेजेंट विद अ कैपिटल लेटर आर वेन एवर यू सी दिस कैपिटल लेटर आर इट मीन्स वी वॉन्ट टू टॉक अबाउट द सेट ऑफ रियल नंबर्स नाउ राइटिंग एज सबसेट्स एन इज अ सबसेट ऑफ जेड एन मीन्स नेचुरल नंबर नेचुरल नंबर्स सेट ऑफ नेचुरल नंबर इज द सबसेट ऑफ सेट ऑफ इंटीजर्स बिकॉज जेड रिप्रेजेंट इंटीजर्स नाउ जेड इज द सबसेट ऑफ क्यू मीन्स इंटीजर्स आर द सबसेट ऑफ रैशनल नंबर्स नाउ क्यू इज द सबसेट ऑफ आर मीन्स रैशनल नंबर सेट ऑफ रैशनल नंबर इज द सबसेट ऑफ रियल नंबर्स एंड टी इज ऑल्सो द सबसेट ऑफ आर मीन्स इ रैशनल नंबर इज द सबसेट ऑफ रियल नंबर्स नाउ इंटरनल नोटेशन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो प्लीज कॉन्सेंट्रेट एंड अंडरस्टैंड वी कैन राइट टू लेस देन एक्स लेस देन फाइव एज एक्स बिलोंग्स टू 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 फाइव इन दिस स्मॉल टू ब्रैकेट्स दिस सिंबल रिप्रेजेंट बिलोंग्स टू एंड दिस थिंग टू लेस देन एक्स लेस देन फाइव कैन बी रिटर्न इन दिस फॉर्मैट एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड इंटरवल नोटेशन नाउ लेट्स सी वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ इंटरवल नोटेशन एंड हाउ कैन बी राइट डाउन एंड वॉट इज द यूज ऑफ दीज ब्रैकेट्स वी हैव थ्री डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ इंटरवल्स ओपन इंटरवल मीन्स टू स्मॉल ब्रैकेट्स Close interval means two close big brackets, and semi-open interval means one o one small one big, or one big one small. Now, what is the meaning of these brackets? Let's understand. If, for example, I have taken two to five in these two small brackets, if I have written this way, it means all the real numbers between two and five, but excluding two and five. Two. To five, all the real numbers I will include in this interval, but I will not include two and five. The way it was written here, x is greater than two, and x is less than five. But x is not equal to two and not equal to five. So we will put these two open brackets. If I have closed interval, so it means all the real numbers between two and five, including two and five. It means. X may be equal to two and equal to five as well. So whenever these two numbers are also involved, also included in the interval, then we put these two big brackets and we call them as closed interval. Semi-open means one side small, one side big. Means one side open and one side closed. It means all the real numbers between two and five, excluding two, including five. And here all the real numbers between two and five. Including two, excluding five. Now let's see how we represent on the number line. If I have taken this interval A B open interval, it means A and B are not included. So what will I do? I will put these two nots holes. It means A and B are not included. Rest all the real numbers between A and B are included, but A and B are not included. and we call it as open interval close interval means equal to as well a and b are also included so i will put two big brackets and we call them as closed intervals semi open interval means one side open one side closed so if a is included x is greater than or equal to a but less than b so if a is included so i will put this big bracket this side it is closed and open bracket here at b it means open it means b a is included but b is excluded so a is included so i'll dark this part and b is excluded so i will keep it as it is this whole not we call it as not and a is less than x less than equal to b it means a is excluded but b is included so i will open it on the left side and close it on the right side so it will be a nod at a because a is not included and it will be dark at b because b is included now write x greater than 2 in interval notation first of all let's plot it on the number line x is greater than 2 it means all the real numbers after 2 on the number line but excluding 2 x is greater than 2 but not equal to 2 so i'll put a nod at 2 The two is not included. Rest all the numbers after two greater than two are there. So x goes to two infinity because how many numbers are there on the number line? Infinity, infinite numbers. So x belongs to two to infinity. 
both open bracket because 2 is excluded and infinity also excluded because infinity is not the number. Now x is greater than equal to 3. x is greater than equal to 3 means all the numbers after 3 but 3 also. 3 is also included. So see the difference. If 3 is also included so we have to dark this portion at 3. And now how would we write in the interval form that x belongs to 3 to infinity and it will be a closed interval big bracket at 3 and open at infinity. Now x is less than 5 means all the numbers less than 5 are included but 5 is excluded because x is less than 5. And how would we write it? How much less? Till minus infinity. So x goes minus infinity to 5 both open brackets. x is less than minus 1. So all the numbers less than minus 1. x is less than or equal to minus 1. So we will include minus 1 also. So how would we write it? Minus infinity to minus 1. And at minus 1 we will put a close interval, close bracket. Which represent that minus 1 is also included. Now infinity and minus infinity always has an open bracket because these are not numbers. Now we have to write x less than equal to minus 1 and x is greater than 2. So first of all let's make their separate graphs and then we will merge both the graphs. So x is less than minus 1 this way less than or equal to minus 1 so we will dark this at minus 1 x is greater than 2 it means 2 is excluded but rest all the numbers greater than 2 are included and now we have to make on one single graph so we basically have to merge both the graphs x is less than equal to minus 1 so minus 1 is also included and x is greater than 2 so and here means plus or we call it as union also. So x goes minus infinity to minus 1 and from 2 to plus infinity. So in the interval notation we will write x belongs to infinity. We will put open bracket minus infinity to minus 1. Minus 1 was included so close bracket union plus means in the set theory we have a symbol for and and plus we call it as union and 2 to infinity both open bracket because both are excluded. Now one more example let's take write x less than 5 and x greater than 2 in the interval notation. Let's make their separate graphs then we'll merge both the graphs. x less than 5 means this open not x goes 2 to 5 so in the interval notation we will write x belongs to 2 to 5 because 2 and both are excluded and x greater than 2 means here also see 2 is excluded. Now we have to merge both the graphs so x is less than 5 less than 5 and x is greater than 2 greater than 2 and less than 5 means this portion only on the number line. This was the separate graph see don't get confused. This was the separate graph of x is less than 5. So how much less? We don't know. It goes till minus infinity. x is greater than 2. So greater than 2. How much greater? Till positive infinity. But when we have to merge both the graphs, x is greater than 2 and less than 5. So definitely only this portion will come. So x goes from 2 to 5 because we have to make only one single graph of those both the graphs. So in the interval notation we can say x belongs to 2 to 5 and both will be open intervals. Now next is power set. Let us take the set A, 1, 2. Okay, let us find all the subsets of A first of all. We know that property of subsets that every set is the subset of all the sets and every set is the subset of itself. Empty set is the subset of all the set and every set is a subset of itself. These two properties we have just covered in this video only. Now, let's see how to find the subsets first of all. This is the set A we have taken. Now we have to write the subsets. So by this property, empty set is the subset. 
and by this property second every set is the subset means a is a subset of itself now we have two more sets one and two if i write both the elements in the set format so these two are also subsets of this set because one yes one is the element two yes two is the element one and two yes they are also the elements and phi yes phi is also the element so by this property these four are the subsets of a set a now power set is the set of all the subsets if i compile all these four subsets and i write these four subsets again in the set format so i will call that big set as power set power set how we write p and inside the bracket a means power set of a is equal to curly braces and in this set we will write all the subsets of this given set a so phi 1 2 and 1 2 this is the power set of this set now number of subsets of a set number of subsets of a set there is one formula 2 raised to the power n where n is the number of elements of the set for the same set that we have just taken for the example 1 2 the subsets are 5 1 2 and 1 2 so the number of subsets are 4 we can count them 1 2 3 and 4 and by this formula if you use this formula 2 raised to the power n where n is the number of elements so how many elements we have 2 so 2 raised to the power 2 which is 4 so yes it is very fine let's take one more example for set b 1 2 3 subsets let's write the subset one is 5 and another is set itself rest 1 2 3 1 2 2 3 1 3 so all these are the subsets of set b now let's use this formula the number of subsets is equal to 2 raised to the power number of elements how many elements 3 so 2 raised to the power 3 8 so do we have eight subsets 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 yes so it is very fine now number of elements of power set now we know that power set is the set of all subsets so the number of elements of power set is equal to the number of subsets of that set so it means number of elements of power set is also same this is nothing new is equal to 2 raised to the power n so if sometime somebody asks you what is the total number of the elements of power set so that is same formula that we have to apply the number of subsets of any set is equal to 2 raised to the power n here also we will use the same formula now universal set universal set is the set which contains all the elements of other sets for example we can say that universal set is the source set we can say the source set from that source the other sets are coming now let a b and c three different sets so universal set will have all the elements of set a b and c and we represent the universal set with capital letter u like if i write u as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so now you can find out all the elements of a b and c in this set u 1 2 3 4 yes they are there 3 4 5 6 as yes, they are there and 6 7 8 are also here so note that all the sets are subsets of universal set means a is a subset of u yes b is a subset of u yes c is the subset of u yes that's why we can say that all the sets are subsets of universal set also so students hopefully you must have understood all these concept if still you have any confusion anywhere then i would suggest you to please see the video one more time all these doubts will be cleared and please try few examples of ncrt of exercise 1.3
please try a few questions yourself thank you very much